With the two albums, they're probably the two of the best albums I've ever done in my life. And I think this one, for me, and for Bernie, I know, definitely, this is his favorite album we've ever done. But see, I can say this, and you're, I, knowing you, you're too humble to say it, but I, I'm going to toot your horn for a minute. <laughs> Not a lot of artists today can sit down and record an, an album live. No way. You yeah. guys really... You're musicians. Yeah. You're artists, and well, that's what we. That's why we like to play live because we are musicians. Um, and and you know, I, there's a lot of great technology around, and I love it. Uh, but I don't understand it too much. So I think it's better that I just do what I do best and sit at the piano, play with my band, and and, and make live music. And, and if it comes to recording it that quickly and that enjoyably, then we're going to do it like that. And you know, what? I have a question for you because you said with this album, the Captain and the Kid, within 20 days. You, the music was written. You were in the, in the theater, and, yeah. you, and everything came together. So does Bernie always write the lyrics first, or there are times where you write the song first, and then he does the no, lyrics? No, it's, it? it's always been Bernie writes the lyrics first, and he comes down to Atlanta and uh, or wherever we're recording and, and explains this, the lineup. This was easier to record because it's written in running order. Right. And it's so much easier to, re to record an album in running order than it is when you've got four, 14 or 15 songs in it. Now, how are we going to sequence this? Right. So this one... It tells a story. It's kind of like a visual thing. It starts off uh, with postcards from Richard Nixon when we first landed in America and got picked up by a London bus, and we were so disappointed we wanted to be met by an American <laughs> big car. Um, and, and, and then from once you've got that song written, then you go on to the next song. Um, and then it just, it, it's kind of a visual thing as you're writing as well. Steve McQueen, and so we had, you mentioned. Yeah, sorry? Right. You mentioned seeing Steve, Steve McQueen. McQueen. Well, I actually did see Steve McQueen on Sunset driving a red Porsche. And, you know, we, we were like... Our eyes were this big because we, we were in America, we were in Los Angeles, we were in Hollywood, and we could not believe what was happening to us. And, and, and America's always been so great to us. I mean, my career started in America, and I say this uh, at the end of the show every night, that I'm so grateful for the, the loyalty that the American public have had for us over the years, through the ups and the downs and whatever. Um, my audiences that come to see me are just the, the best of the messages they send, and it's it's great to be able to thank people for that because um, without America, I don't know where I'd been. I might not have been successful because that trip to Los Angeles, and I didn't want to go. Right. I didn't want to go. I thought, no, it's too soon. And too soon. What did I know? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but it, it's been an incredible ride, and it's, it's led to a wonderful life, um, and me living uh, part-time in Atlanta and having so many friends in this country. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, this album is very influenced by a lot of American music. Or, Everything that we did in our early career, and to the, to the last album, even Peachtree Road, were influenced by American music. So it's for only fitting that we recorded it in Atlanta and made it in America. Oh, and we won't let you go home here, because I was mentioning how th this tour was supposed to be three years, 75 shows, you come in, you're, and in 18 months, you had done all 75 shows, and in reaction to the phenomenal success that people have, you know, are experiencing with you going through this journey of all your greatest hits, yeah. you're back here now for another 150 shows. I know. Well, um, th when I came to Las Vegas to do the Red Piano, I wanted to raise the bar and do something a little different. So we, in, uh, we enlisted David LaChapelle, who is you know, yeah, he's quite a genius. Yes, and, he and he put this show together with, with, with me and for me. And, and it's, it's a show that I really enjoy every time we've come back. We've done over 120 shows here now. And they've each been really... I notice something different every night. And it, we change it from time to time. We add another film, another video. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, I'm on tour and doing a two, and a two hours three quarters and I come here and I do an hour and a half and you have to make sure there's an hour and a half of really high quality production because that's what people come to Vegas to see. They come to see something that they wouldn't see anywhere else in the world and that's what this show is all about. So for those again that are just joining us, I want to tell you very quickly why we're here. This is a two CD set that is $17.93 and one of the CDs is The Captain and the Kid, the newest CD to come along from Elton John. And you know what, over 6,400 have already been ordered. If you want to have it, it is an advanced order that will ship to you on November 13th, but you use the item number E01919. And keep in mind your bonus CD, which has five tracks on it, all live tracks, three of which are from the Captain and the Kid, and two of which are some of the greatest hits that he's had in the past. You can only find it right here on QVC. So keep that in mind and stay here because we've got more songs coming up from Elton John and we also have a lot more to find out about the collaboration on this fabulous CD to stay with us.
thing about this record is that it's it touches on the basic sort of elements of the arc of life. I mean, it talks about um, achievement, it talks about failure, it talks about death, it talks about love, and those are the things that affect everybody. And so we're simply talking about the things that affected us, but in essence, they're really the things that touch everybody's lives. Welcome back to Elton John, live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, we are here live in Las Vegas with the one, the only Elton John, and we are broadcasting from the Coliseum, which of course is in Caesars here in Las Vegas. We have an amazing opportunity for you. It is a two CD set. The CD, The Captain and the Kid, which is the latest CD to come from Elton John, and the bonus CD, which has five live tracks on it that cannot be found anywhere else. If you want to get this for the holidays, and it's, a, it's an advanced order that will ship to you on November 13th, the price for both is $17.93, and I want to reintroduce for those of you just joining us, first of all, to Sir Elton John, who has been so gracious to be here today. I know you have a show to perform tonight, so it really means a lot to us you've taken the time out of your day to well, do with us. It's a first for me. I've never done this before. <laughs> so it's always nice to have a first, you know, after all this time. It's nice to... Uh... You know, I watch BBC quite a lot because I'm just fascinated by what, what people buy. And, and you know, and, and, I, yeah, and, and, and watch the numbers come up, and it's this. It, it fascinates me. No, it's uh, it's a really, it's a really cool thing. And it's live TV. And of I course, know. I love live TV. That's that's even better. It yeah, is. Exactly. And Cynthia yeah. Garrett is joining us too. And of course, yeah. she was a lead interviewer from VH1, and uh, she also has a line of fashion jewelry here on QVC, <laughs> which has just exploded. Everyone loves it. And so you've interviewed Elton before, and we're so glad that you're here along with us because this has been so much fun so far. It's, it's, it's always great for me. To, it's been so long, but it's always great for me to interview someone who, I mean, come on, you know, I'm a fan. <laughs> and, and I think when you lose that, for what I do, when you lose the ability to really be a fan, you, yeah, lose, your, you lose your magic in life, I, I'm, you know? I'm a fan of so many, you know, people, and especially younger artists. And I like, you know, that keeps you young. It keeps you, you know, your ears... Mm -hmm. uh, young and, and, and fresh, and there's always something new to hear from someone. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, uh, and, and it's great. That's it. I've always, I always like to go out every Tuesday and buy my CDs, and it's just as exciting now as it was when I was a little kid. Well, mm -hmm. you play so many trails for younger artists. Are yeah. you kidding me? That's why it's interesting. You said this is a first for you on QVC. It doesn't surprise me right. that you would be one of the first really great artist to be here because yeah. you tend to always put your finger on the pulse of the of what's new and edgy. Well you have to, you have to, you know, I, I know all the great old music and I love it and it's in my computer in my brain but I, you know, when you hear things like Scissor Sisters and, uh, yes. and, and The Killers and Ray, <laughs> Absolutely. La, Ray La Montagna and Rufus Wainwright and Anthony and the Johnsons, these kind of new people come along, John Mayer, I championed him a few years ago and he's now huge. Um, Ryan Adams, these people, they teach me a lot. They, uh, they have so much energy. Young people have so much positive energy. And, and, and for someone like myself, it just rubs off, and I just love it. I just absolutely love you, it. You know what I think it is? You mentioned young people having so much energy. I, I, I have a 14-year-old son, mm -hmm. and, and I realize that the thing about him that's so amazing for me to see is that, that sort of ability to do it all. It's a faith they have mm -hmm. looking yeah. forward in life. There's no fear. No. The youngsters have no fear. They're and, uh, invincible. And, yeah. and when you're in a young band and, and or a young artist, you don't have the fear. And everything is just done completely and utterly on instinct. And that's mm -hmm. what happened to us in the first few years of our career um, when we were successful in 1970, 75, when we could really do no wrong. When the Captain Fantastic album came out, it was the first album to come out in at number one on the Billboard charts. And, and we had no fear. And then you step aside a little bit and then someone takes over and things you never kind of have that instinct again you have instincts but mm -hmm. there's a certain period of time for which you feel invincible you're yeah. so right you're so right 